Imagine, if you will, an ordinary fire hydrant in an ordinary street in an ordinary town. A little fire hydrant, and attached to that fire hydrant is a balloon, a big balloon. And this balloon floats up into the air where it is attacked by little tiny batteries, little flying batteries like you see in Star Wars, and they go and they attack it. The batteries fall down into a barrel. Once in the barrel, next to the barrel, there is a board. And on the board, there is a diamond. The diamond rolls down the board and falls into Knight Rider with David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Knight Rider, David Hasselhoff, they drive the car over where there are two ox. Pulls right in between the two ox. Somebody steps out and starts brushing their teeth because they're very dirty. And then they take the toothbrush and they throw it away and it hits a board. You may be wondering why I'm telling you this bizarre story, but I will tell you, I first heard this story 40 years ago in 1979, approximately in my high school chemistry class, room C10, Mr. Carpenter. And the story has stuck with me ever since. In fact, I can't forget it. Now, I will be telling you what it means at the end of the speech, but just a little hint. It's not boron. I try not to be boron. We'll come back to it. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I have a confession to make. I have a terrible memory. Everything just goes through my brain like a sieve. Who here has a terrible memory? Thank you, honest people. It's kind of plagued me, I would say, throughout my life. It hasn't helped me back too far. The uh, writer Rita Mae Brown, she, did, she once said, uh, one of the keys to happiness is a bad memory. Maybe that works for uh, relationships. <laughs> but in professionally, and in terms of Toastmasters speechcraft, it can really hold you back. In day to day, it's not a huge problem. If I forget where my glasses are, if I forget where my keys are, they'll turn up, it's not a big deal. Somebody will help me. If I can't remember somebody's names at a cocktail party, I'll just nod politely. We've all done this, right? <laughs> but what about giving a speech in front of Toastmasters? What about professionally? I have turned down jobs from time to time just because I was afraid there's gonna to be too much memory. I can't be a journalist, I can't be a lawyer, I can't go into academia, there's too much memorization. I should do something else. So it's been holding me back professionally. And you can imagine why I was absolutely terrified about joining Toastmasters. Right? I dragged my heels for years about this. Anybody else that dragged your heels about Toastmasters? Yeah. How was I gonna memorize all those words? You know, a song maybe I can remember, I can remember a tune, but all of those words, there's no way. But figuring that there must be other people who've experienced this, I did a little bit of research and discovered something really interesting. Our brains were shaped and formed 10,000 years ago, 10,000 to 100,000 years ago, in fact, during the caveman time, during Pleistocene era. And our brains were not designed to remember passwords, names of people at cocktail parties, everything that we do now in this information age. They weren't designed that way. Our brains were designed to remember several things. For example, where is the best place to hunt? Where is the best place to forage? How do we find our way back to the cave? Is this edible or poisonous? <coughs> we weren't designed to do any of these other things. So uh, the question is, how can we take our caveman brains to help us remember in this common age? How can we use our caveman brains to remember this thing called a Toastmaster speech? The Greeks and Romans had a similar problem. This was the age of oratory and rhetoric and they had to speak, but they still had the caveman brain back then. Our brains are very similar. Here's what they came up with. Something really brilliant. It's called the method of loci, or the memory palace. Has anybody ever heard of the memory palace before? A few people. We can learn a lot more about it here in a second. I'll give you an example. The key to the memory palace is to take abstract ideas and turn them into images. 
so that you can remember them. Because that's what our brains really can do. We can remember locations and we can remember uh, images and ideas. So they developed this plan of taking a image, excuse me, taking a abstract idea, turning it into an image, and then placing it in a location that you know very well. This location could be your route from work, or from home to work. It could be, uh, the location could be your home or apartment right now. It could be your home that you grew up in, your childhood home. Anything that you know very, very well, backwards and forwards, that's going to serve you well. Take a location, and then you walk through it in your mind, and then you can't forget your speech. Sounds a little bit abstract, right? But what I want to do is give you an example of how this works in the real world in a, a typical preparation for speech. So let's say you are going to give a speech about the benefit of seniors in having pets. And the five benefits are, one, that it, uh, give, it provides companionship. Two, it provides a uh, opportunity to create some routine. Actually, it actually gets you out of your routine, which is excellent. Three, exercise. Four, stress release. And five, it is an opportunity to get out of the house. So these five things. For me, with a porous memory, I probably would forget most of these. I might remember the first, I might remember the last, but I wouldn't remember all of them. And imagine if you have a much longer speech. But if you use the memory palace, you'll never forget it. To do this though, what you want to do is figure out five landmarks in a place that you know very well, and then attach these ideas to those landmarks. Now for me, I use my office. And in my office, I have several really interesting things. I have a ladder, I have a copy machine, I have a, what I call a kitty condo, you know, one of those kitty exercise uh, things. I have a, for some reason, an inflatable palm tree. <laughs> and finally, I have a industrial strain paper cutter, like the joke we were talking about. How do you attach these ideas and concepts to these locations? Well, you create a crazy story a vivid, ridiculous image that you can never forget. And then what you want to do, once you've created that image, is you want to heat it up a little bit. Create some action, some excitement. And then you'll never forget it. So if you remember, the first word was companionship and we've got a ladder, a little step ladder. Here's what my little brain came up with. You have a comma, kind of like a little grammatical comma. And the comma, being alive, jumps into a fry pan, and the fry pan is very hot, and so it then jumps down lower on the ladder into a ship, a wooden ship, and the ship bursts into flame, and the little pirates go jumping off of it, abandoning ship. I can never forget the word comma, pan, ship, companionship. Comma, pan, ship. It doesn't have to be that elaborate, but that's what works for me. I broke it into syllables. Second one, was a copy machine and the concept was routine. Either get you out of routine or provide routine. So I was thinking there's a root system, a big tree, and it's got a root system and the roots grow so rapidly, like in a science fiction movie, that they blow the lid up to the roof, it sticks to the roof and stucco comes raining down on us. And that's how I came up with the word routine and I tied it to this root system. Then it comes to exercise and I've got the kitty condo. So I'm imagining my cat, Ava, and she's wearing spandex. I don't know why. And she's so fat and heavy, she's a Maine Coon, they're very big cats, and so she crushes it. It all collapses to the ground and she goes, ta-da, sticks the landing. <laughs> I now remember exercise. Fourth one is stress release. How do you do stress release? Well, I've got this palm tree, I told you it's an inflatable palm tree. A giant is squeezing it to release stress, but the coconuts on the palm tree go flying all over the place and they hit them in the nose and blood comes gushing out. Told you, sometimes violence can be the most memorable, particularly giant violence. The fifth one is this industrial strain, paper cutter, and it's tied to the word get out of the house. And so I'm thinking in my mind as I was putting this together, well, maybe I've got like a gingerbread house and the paper cutter cuts it open and all these little tiny Lego people come running out with parachutes and they jump off the table saying, free at last, free at last and then I remember the word get out of the house. 
crazy, but this works. All I have to do now, when I'm trying to remember the speech, is walk through, just walk through the room in my mind, and I look at the ladder, and I think of that crazy image, and I think of companionship. I look at the copy machine, I think of the root system, and I think of routine. I look at the kitty condo in my mind, and I see my cat doing exercise. And then I look at the palm tree, and I see the giant squeezing it for stress release, and the coconut hitting him in the nose. And then finally, I look at the, uh, the paper cutter, and I think of getting out of the house. And it works every time, and what's great, not only will I remember this six months from now, but I can do this whole speech backwards. I just have to walk the other direction. <laughs> if you have a speech that's longer, obviously you might need more rooms. I, I could add five landmarks in my kitchen and maybe I have another five landmarks upstairs. And then if it gets bad, I have to go to another house, you know, <laughs> go to my childhood house, which I've done before. I had one where I had about six or seven different rooms, but I remember the whole speech. And I remember, in fact, this speech today, which I've done before, it wasn't very hard for me to remember it because I just had to walk through it. I'm still walking through it right now at this moment. I did mention, speaking of vivid images, I did mention that crazy story from earlier. Remember the one with the fire hydrant? Does anybody know what this refers to? No. The hint was boron. It was my chemistry class. And this was a hint on how to remember the first 10 elements in the periodic table. Hydrogen is the fire hydrant. Helium is the balloon. The lithium batteries, they're made from lithium. It drops down into a barrel, which is beryllium, and it's got a board on it, hence boron. There's a diamond sitting on the board, which is carbon. It flows down into Knight Rider, which is nitrogen. Drives between these two ox, which is? Oxygen. Oxygen, yes. And then someone starts brushing its teeth with fluoride, which is fluorine. And then they throw the brush and it hits a board, which is neon. You can remember these very easily. I, I remember for 40 years, I know the first 10 symbols. In conclusion, speaking is a, is a tense thing. It's not easy to speak, no matter whether you have something like this or not. However, it is certainly going to be easier if you have something like a memory palace. Mark Twain once said, there are two types of speakers. The nervous and the liars. <laughs> I urge you to try this memory palace the next time. There's a lot of upfront work, but once you do it, it's fun, it's creative, you use your imagination, it's actually pretty cool. And yeah, just uh, lean on it, and I believe that you will find that you will be within your element. Mr. Toastmaster. Uh -huh.